Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I want to be messing a little bit more with these small NVMe drives to put in a server. Last time uh, we messed with this awesome IBM X3850 M2 where we put this in and I had a lot of that video took three days to record and I had nothing but trouble to get that thing up and running. Um, but I put this in and I didn't get the numbers that I was looking for. I was hoping for way more speed than I got. And of course I read all the comments of the video and the best comments refer to that this server might have PCI Express uh, Generation 1 slots. Which would explain why this didn't perform as, um, as I thought it would. If this is a Generation 1, well this being an X4 it should have a maximum of 1000 megabytes per second theoretical throughput and that might just end up being the 855 megabytes per second that I was seeing here so maybe it wasn't weird at all also the hard drive that I tested in there people referred to that might be running a really old SATA controller and that might also explain why I only saw um, a bit over a hundred megabytes per second off of that otherwise good SSD. But I wanted to put this in and um, the heat sinks has arrived from China. They're not very big. They're, it's a tiny heat sink to mount on top of this. So I think we'll do that and then we'll put it in the server again. And then I think I'll go and, and download um, Samsung's test software for it and see if we can run that and then try with another server with faster PCI Express ports. So I bought a bunch of these in the hopes that I could um, I could start to sell them and um, with the result that I got from this server I was not gonna be selling them um, but if we get better results I might be selling them and it will be a set like this a uh, bag with the with the PCB and another bag with the heatsink combined and if so they will be in the link in the description but before I do that we need to make this work otherwise I'm not gonna be the one pushing crap to you at least I want to see it working here before I try to sell it to you that's just well maybe I don't actually have to to take this off Let's see, uh, the heat sink, let's just take the thing in this bag. And there is a lot of stuff here, there are some wipes and some elastic bonds and the heat sink itself. So let's dry and wet. Ah, okay, let's try this wet one. It does not feel that wet. So let's, let's dry that off. Oh, oh, I took the dry one, that's why. This is the wet one, okay. Yeah, this is wet. My mistake. So. I couldn't, couldn't get that to add up. I thought it had dried in and that would be bad. Okay, so now it's dried off. And we're gonna be placing it like that. Uh, we're gonna be putting some of this heat uh, thingy on the back of it so let's there is some transparent plastic here just making sure that we are in view so let's put that on here oh okay and it has to fit precisely apparently it's the size of the heat sink awesome okay that looks good I'll remove the plastic on the other side if it will let me there don't go nowhere and yeah this is the samsung nvme ssd 960 evo just so that uh, we don't forget that okay this looks pretty good and then we have the select Elastics, I think they have just probably just some bicycle that has been cut up. <laughs> Looks very professional, right? I wonder what those slots are for. 
maybe they could be used for something nah. so then the other one I want up here and there's like a um, like a space where we can put that in here and just put that over there this way it, it can still go down the socket now oh, this doesn't look too good it has to be kind of straight so ah. these are very well priced they weren't expensive at all so let's try and put that in um, as I said in the last video um, you will actually get better performance from these if they are hot if they are too cold the performance goes down ever so slightly but on the other side if they are too hot they won't live as long but it's not as if you're shortering its life by a whole lot it's just a little bit so maybe you want it a little bit faster which is not a lot or maybe you want it to live a little bit longer which is also not a lot so uh, yeah let's put this back in as in the bias of this machine you might have seen it when i started the video i was looking for if, if these pci slots were available and um, it could be if this server was a generation where pci express 2.0 was brand new and IBM thought that well most people are not going to run 2.0 because there are no cards available for that yet so we're going to set it as a standard for 1.0 and then you had to uh, to change it up yourself I was looking for something like that but it's nowhere to be found so um, that's probably not the case I thought that and I looked for it and I haven't found anything oh I just remembered uh, there was also comments about uh, that I wasn't using all the pins on this and uh, NVMe drive they use PCI Express X4 that's these pins they are not using the X8 or the X16 which I cut off they're just not being used on NVMe drives if you have a, a card where you have two of these or four of these well you would need for two you would need x8 and for four you would need x16 but for one you only use x4 and that's the bandwidth that will be available no matter how many pins it has x1 looks like this and you can run a lot of stuff on x1 um, it's just the bandwidth that is going to be reduced a lot of stuff will work just fine and uh, this is a USB 3 port with an X1 here we have an X4 this RAID controller or HPA is X8 you can see that is even longer and then we go up to the graphics cards which are usually X16 and they use all of the slots um, not necessarily it needs all the slots but they are there you can actually run a graphics card just using X1 um, it will most of the time work just fine it might run ever so slightly slower because it doesn't get the bandwidth that it needs to get to offload its data but that's not really what the graphics card does it's not it's not transferring that much data it's calculating a lot of stuff and then it returns the results so it's often just a few percent that you lose even though you're cutting it down to next to nothing in traffic so yeah just a little bit about that and we'll just pop this in and in this server there is only x8 slots there are seven of those okay i have installed this uh, samsung but it says that there is a firmware update that might give us some more oomph if we can do something about that update that sounds about right software update firmware update for the Samsung SSD 960 Evo I don't think I'm seeing the whole screen here what do we have out here yeah <laughs> update after updating please save okay we have saved everything there's nothing okay so updating firmware okay that was no problem whatsoever updated it and the server rebooted and we logged in again and now it's um, should be on the latest and the greatest so let's do a performance benchmark uh, if we go over here it says that there is no benchmark re results as uh, it has never run a benchmark on here so uh, oh benchmark all I like that button let's try that 
Okay. So Anne is running down there. So um, should we just break and see the results? I think so. And here are the results. Very low for an NVMe drive like this. Um, 895 megabytes per second read, 152 write, and the IOs 141,601 IO read, 34,179 write. So, uh, yeah, not the greatest results. Let's try and down this and put it in a newer server. Yeah, I couldn't help myself, so I ran this Alto Disk Benchmark again, and it shows the same picture. We're getting about, well this says 145 megabytes write per second and about 855 megabytes per second. So that's all good. Let's try the IOs down here and see if it's... Yeah, it has considerably less IOs compared to what the other ones said. Well, some higher, some lower, but this is more in detail. So everything seems lower than what Samsung claimed. Hmm. Okay, I went out into the data center and I got this awesome IBM slash Lenovo X3550 M4 where I'm gonna be trying to put in the NVMe drive but this was what I was talking about and looking for in the other BIOS the selection where you can select which generation you want this uh, PCI Express slot to be Gen 1, Gen 2 and Gen 3. Of course we're gonna pick Gen 3. It could have been that the other server would have been uh, set up to pick Gen 1 as a standard, but well, I'll mess with this. It's, it's complaining down here, so uh, I'll figure out what that was all about and uh, see if it will boot Windows so we can do a test again. I just um, installed server 2019 on this and we're kind of ready to put this NVMe drive in here. Uh, this is a newer server and it has some good riser cards over here and these riser cards they actually do have x16s just pop that up there we have we have an x16 slot down there um, and it's a real x16 it says here that well the slot is x16 but it also takes x16 x8 x and X1 and it supplies 75 watts so let's put our NVMe drive in there and um, for this one I wouldn't really have had to cut it so if I took the other one a fresh one out of the bag let's just pretend that this one had an, an NVMe drive on it let's That one would be able to fit here as well. We could pop that in like that. There, and we could put the NVMe drive there. But I have already cut the other one, so, um, and as these connections are not being used at all, uh, it would only be for stability. So if you're mounting an NVMe drive in a bigger slot, well, don't remove the pins because um, it will be more stable in there and it will be sitting ever so slightly better it's not a big deal but you know every little thing counts so we'll put that in there there and put that back in the server it's not gonna go anywhere so let's put the slot back here I probably didn't have to take it out at all but for video works I could also put it over here there's another X16 slot there. Oh, and this one is actually, you can kind of see slot two, PCI Express three, X8. There is no X16 here, even though the slot is the same width. There is two CPUs in here, so this slot is also available. I have a very cool 10 gigabit ethernet card in here. That is a cool one. Okay, here we are. The NVMe drive showed up right away. No problems whatsoever. So, and I have installed the Samsung Magic whatever. Made the screen resolution a bit better so we can see more of it. Let's run the benchmark. Let's see how it does here. It should do better. Okay, it completed. It took a bit. Um, it seems 
I had a lot of drives down here that it tried to do. Uh, now we got some good numbers. Like now it's doing like 3,355 megabytes per second in read and 1,819 megabytes per second in write. Pretty awesome. Good IOs in both read and write, over 100,000 each. So um, with a newer PCI Express port, it works a lot better. Uh, kind of fun because I have a normal spinning drive down here and that does 116 megabytes per second uh, read and 115 megabytes per second write and um, IOs are like just under 500 and just under 250 so uh, compared to the thousands and thousands up here well you can really see what difference this makes putting an NVMe drive in there uh, unfortunately it did not do the USB stick eh, that would have been fun and I have another hard drive in here and I hadn't made a volume on that so it didn't do that either so never mind that the top numbers that's really good and it's, it's still happy and the temperature is 29 degrees Celsius awesome I'm just gonna run this Alto drive benchmark as well here are the results small packages not very fast big packages way faster and the fastest is somewhere in the middle top write speed is 1.71 gigabytes per second top read speed uh, that must be 2.85 gigabytes per second really good really good let's let's check the ios and those are also higher than what we saw um they are considerably lower than what samsung's own software tells me that they were here's another opinion let's call it that okay so as i'm gonna try and sell you some of these i need to figure out how much they weigh so that what the shipping will be if i calculated this correct it should be um there's always kind of an invoice so that piece of paper is five grams then there's an envelope for the oh and then there's the board with the screwdriver and then there's the heatsink let's try that again 52 grams i would like it to be under 50 grams but this means that i'll be able to ship this to anywhere in the world for four euros four euros is well it's not expensive but it's still money but it's manageable right way better results this time and this means that if you have some empty spots in your server well you can put some nvme drives in there and get really good performance out of them even an older server like the bottom one here i get way better performance than any drive to put in the front like 850 megabytes per second it's really good out of an old server like that and there's room for seven of them in there not too shabby i'll mention it again visit my shop links in the description and i'll try to make these available i have a decent stock of them but i could very quickly run out because i didn't buy thousands of them i just bought it well i think about 25 so i'm probably gonna have 20 for sale but much appreciated if you want to support what i do um, they're gonna be ridiculously overpriced compared to what you might be able to find them for anywhere else in the world but well it helps support the channel so uh, if you want to do that um, check them out I don't know yet what I'm gonna charge for them but well links in the description I'm pretty satisfied with that we kind of got this running and figured out why it wasn't doing very well last time and I installed server 2019 on this and it only took a few hours which is also a big plus because those two days that it took on that one that was ridiculous thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye